Golden Corral is an American restaurant chain which offers an all-you-can-eat buffet and grill that opened in 1973. Thank you for your suggestion. I'd like the crab cakes and throw in chowder, salmon, and shrimp, all for around 10 bucks. <laughs> no! No other place can match Golden Corral's Great American Seafood Tour. Hawaiian coconut shrimp, Eastern Bay scallops, and more, all for around 10 bucks, only at Golden Corral. Golden Corral was born in 1973 when James Maynard and William Carl were unable to convince Ponderosa, Bonanza, Western Sizzlin, or any of the other major chains that they were financially worthy of a franchise. Undaunted, they mapped out the plans for their first steakhouse in a North Carolina library and raised money by selling shares to friends from high school and college. The first Golden Corral opened in 1973 in Fayetteville. The motif was western and the emphasis was on meat and potatoes. Patrons raised their hands for their orders and when the waitresses, or stirrets, called out their numbers. During the 1970s, about 90% of the Golden Corral customers raised their hands for red meat. The company counted on freshness to separate itself from other budget steakhouses. From the beginning, each Golden Corral restaurant cut its own steaks from fresh USDA choice beef. Golden Corral started with a 7 ounce sirloin and ran up to 12 ounces. They cut top butts, tenderloins, fillets, and ribeyes. Golden Corral also charged only slightly more for its fresh steaks than other budget chains did for their frozen imported steaks. The company also set itself apart by focusing on small town America, opening most of its units in markets with almost no direct competition. Golden Corral also distinguished itself by avoiding franchising agreements. Many Golden Corral managers became partners, owning 20 to 30 percent of the units they ran. Maynard said that expansion was always the goal. Using money from sales and lease backs and bank loans and internally generated cash, the young company grew rapidly. By 1979, Golden Corral owned more than 100 restaurants. By the end of 1980, the total was 151. The 1982 purchase of 193 restaurants from Sirloin Stockade, a Kansas-based competitor, further swelled the ranks. Approximately 100 Sirloin Stockades became Golden Corrals, either owned outright by the privately held company or managed under the Golden Corral banner through a leasing agreement with parent company Investors Management Corporation. By the mid-1980s, there were 430 Golden Corral restaurants. Each unit averaged about 5,000 square feet in size and about a million dollars in annual sales. The company continued to add restaurants and make a profit throughout the 1980s, but increased competition, the recession, and changes in American eating habits threatened to make the steakhouse a dinosaur. As consumption of red meat dropped and demand for fresh green foodstuffs grew, Golden Corral and its competition first added salad bars and then expanded them. Some Golden Corral units gave up more than 30 seats to make room for salad bars up to 27 feet long. Expanding the dining room added 75 seats but reduced parking. Waste and spoilage shrank profit margins because employees were not trained to handle fresh fruits and vegetables. On top of that, market researchers reported that family steakhouse chains were losing market share to fast food restaurants and to more upscale chains like TGI Fridays and Chili's. By 1987, Golden Corral had more than 500 restaurants in 38 states. Revenues reached $457 million in 1988. The company never lost money, but as its market share and profit margins grew leaner. The company began to experiment with a new layout. The first metro market in Lawton, Oklahoma was a far cry from the dark wagon wheel decor of the earlier Golden Corral. 
It was light, airy, and large, although at 7,800 square feet, it fell about halfway between the older units and the model the company eventually would adopt. Most importantly, it replaced the old salad bar with a U-shaped buffet court that took up a third of the floor space. The first seven metro markets, or GC10s, restaurants, opened in 1991 at approximately 10,000 square feet and able to seat 400 to 440 customers. The new units dwarf the old, which averaged 5,000 square feet and 175 seats. The centerpiece of the new units was, of course, the food bar, dubbed the Golden Choice Buffet. Entering a cafeteria-style line, customers could still order a fresh-cut USDA choice-grade steak now. However, they could also opt for any of the 170 all-you-can-eat items. A typical Golden Choice Buffet might include Salisbury steak, chicken pot pie, fried chicken, shrimp and meatballs and gravy among entrees, and corn, green beans, carrots, turnip greens, cream potatoes, and baked potatoes with six different toppings among the vegetables. A health conscious diner could balance the mini fried items with fresh fruit and salad fixings. At the Brass Bell Bakery, the ringing of the brass bell every 15 minutes signaled that more fresh bread, rolls, and pastries were coming out of the oven. For those who saved room, there was plenty of choices for dessert too. To many, the new Golden Corral hardly seemed to be the steakhouse anymore. About 80% of the customers ordered from the food bar, either alone or with an entree. Only about 30% still ordered steak. A major change was Golden Corral's decision to hitch its growth plans to an aggressive franchising effort. The company took its first tentative steps in this direction between 1988 and 1991 when it franchised some 55 troubled outlets to its most talented general managers. In 1991, it awarded seven new franchises. The franchising effort began in earnest in 1992. Golden Corral required potential franchisees to have $300,000 in liquid assets and a net worth of $1.5 million. Previous restaurant experience is necessary, as is the completion of a 12-week training program that teaches a franchise operator every task performed at a Golden Corral restaurant. The company updated the restaurants to a concept called Strata during the mid-2000s in an effort to bring more of the food preparation into the view of the guests. In all locations, guests served themselves, including requesting made-to-order items such as Belgian waffles, omelets, and charbroiled steaks. The most recent design restaurants are known as the Gateway style rolled out late in 2018. These locations were created in hopes of offering a more contemporary appearance for the interior and the exterior of the building with different layouts for the dining room, adding new food service bars and kitchen areas. During the COVID-19 pandemic in early 2020, the chain had temporarily closed down most of its locations, just like other restaurants, in response to the directives for the prevention of COVID-19 that spread across the globe. In order for the chain to sustain its business and to ensure the safety of its guests, some of the chain's locations were reopened, offering cafeteria-style dining and family-style service. In October of 2020, one of its largest franchise operators filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection and had planned to cancel at least 6 out of the 33 leases. As of 2021, there are nearly 500 restaurants in 43 states covering most of the regions in the country. About 100 of them are company-owned, and the others are franchise stores. Thank you for watching. If you like this content, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Thanks.